You may have seen the very first video I made for this channel about the legend of Hike, who slayed the tyrant Bel and migrated to the Ararat mountains where he founded the Armenian nation. Or did he? The legend of Haik was given to us in the 5th century book History of Armenia, written by prominent Armenian historian Movses Horenatsi. Some Armenians believe that this book is 100% historical, all the way down to the legend of Haik. But what do we mean by historical? Let's start by defining some key terms. When we say something is historical, we mean that it happened in real life to real people. For example, we know that in the year 69 BC, a man named Tigranes was the king of Armenia. He was married to Cleopatra, the daughter of the Pontic king Mithridates. Tigranes came face to face in battle with the Roman general Lucullus, where he lost and fled to Ardashat. Both Greek and Roman historians wrote about it not long after the events took place, and we have archaeological evidence like coins with the man's face on it. He really existed. This really happened. It's history. In contrast, mythology is a work of complete fiction, usually created to make a point and they often include supernatural elements. For example, Vahagan was the god of fire, thunder, and war in ancient Armenia. He had fiery hair, a flaming beard, and his eyes were like suns. He fought and slayed Vishaps, Armenian dragons. Not many people today would believe that Vahagan was a real person who really fought real dragons. It's just a made-up story. To be clear, I'm not saying that mythology is meaningless. In fact, we still use mythology as inspiration to make stories more exciting or digestible. But that's essentially mythology, a story with a moral told to explain or deliver a point. Legend is something that falls between the two. According to Movses Khorenatsi, Haig had first migrated to Babylon and later settled at the foot of Mount Ararat and went to war with Bel. We know that Babylon was a real city that may have been founded by a king named Belus. There may have even existed a man named Haig who went to war with Babylonia. But the part about them being giants or Haig being a descendant of Noah, the character from the Bible, are exaggerations. You see, when historians study ancient texts, they can look at many clues to determine how to interpret them, such as what was going on politically at the time when it was written, and how much time passed between the events described in the text and the writing of the actual text. In the case of Movses, he wrote his book History of Armenia around the same period as the Christianization of Armenia. This could explain why the connection to the descendants of Noah was added, in order to connect Armenians to a biblical narrative. Furthermore, we have to remember that up to 3000 years had passed between the legend of Haig and Moses writing about it. In other words, Movses Khorenatsi lived closer in time to you and I than to Haik. And if you have ever gotten together with old friends and looked back at stories from your childhood, you may have noticed how those stories get bigger and bigger the more often they're told. But this isn't to say that everything Moses wrote is to be discredited, especially as the chapters progress his book gradually enters historicity with real people, places, and events. Even the legend of Haig may be inspired by real events. 
The story corresponds roughly to a period in which archaeological evidence suggests the emergence of the Triality Vanatsor culture in Armenia, which may have given rise to the Hayasa'azi confederation, whose connection to Armenians I covered in a previous video. This could very well be a coincidence, but if Moses somehow got that right, over 3000 years later, it would be pretty impressive. So, did Haig exist? I think so, but maybe not as the person described in the book. I believe that Haig is a personification of a group or a tribe who later became the Armenian people. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video on the legend of Haig where I talk about the legend itself. And if you want to support the channel, you can now do so on Patreon.